Hey, what's up, everybody? Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and follow us for more third and long content. What's good, everybody? This is Eric Armstead, and we're back. Season two of Third and Long. I'm going to be giving you NFL and Jags coverage for the entire season. New episodes are dropping weekly, so make sure to subscribe and check us out wherever you get your podcasts. It's been a minute since our last episode. Uh, a lot has been happening in my life, obviously. Huge transition moving from the West Coast to the beautiful state of Florida. Um, you know, it's been, it's been, a lot of people have asked me, you know, how my off season has been, what's been going on. Uh, but it's been amazing. You know, I was here in Jacksonville getting settled in during OTAs, moved my family out here, um, moved into a new house, got my, got my kids settled. Uh, they're in school now. And, you know, so me and my family have been transitioning here. Uh, it's also been good, you know, getting to know my teammates throughout the off season and, you know, starting this, starting this new journey uh, together. Um, it's been a lot of fun getting to know everybody uh, in the building and, you know, getting acclimated to um, not only my teammates, but my new coaching staff, um, everybody else in the building and, you know, learning the new playbook. Um, also, too, you know, I'm recovering from an injury and I'm feeling a lot better now. You know, these these past few months, I've been getting better and better each day. Um, you know, so I'm feeling great, moving around great and, you know, really excited about about this season. And, you know, a few weeks ago, got back on the field in practice with my teammates, taking the field for uh, the first time since uh, the last game I played in, which was the Super Bowl. So, you know, still getting my uh, my feet wet and uh, definitely feeling good, getting better and better each day. And I'm excited to, to get out there on the field with my teammates in week one. You know, so my off season, you know, it was it was eventful. It was busy. And, you know, it's my first experience being on a new team. And uh, it's been great thus far and definitely excited to to get week one rolling. I wouldn't have came here to Jacksonville if I didn't feel like we had a team um, that could win the Super Bowl. And, you know, being here and being around the guys, I definitely see that I'm surrounded by talent. Um, our defensive line is stacked. All the guys up front, you know, we're we're deep. And, you know, in this league, you need great defense alignment to be able to win in this league. And uh, we definitely have that. And this this journey that we're starting has been great. You know, we're all learning a new scheme. You know, this is all our first time playing um, under Ryan Nielsen's scheme and um, learning about what he wants us to do and the different techniques he wants us to play uh, with. And it's been great, you know, coming in being able to learn alongside of the guys and, you know, continue this journey and get better and better each day. You know, guys are super talented. Guys have been super successful in this league just already. But I think uh, in this scheme, you know, we're going to be able to take things to a new level. And I'm definitely excited about taking the, taking the field with them very soon. A lot of talk I've seen about what position I will play I think that also goes into our scheme as well, too. You know, I'm expecting to be all along the defensive line. You know, throughout my career, I've played everything from a zero technique to a wide nine. And for those who don't know football, that's literally every position that you could play on the defensive line. So I feel like I can be dominant at any position. But in terms of this team and my role, I expect to be moving around, playing inside, outside. And it'll be a similar role to the one I've had, you know, for a lot of years on the Niners, um, playing defensive end on first and second down and really dominating the run game and then going inside to pass rush um, on third downs. And so, you know, that's a role that I've had uh, for a lot of years and, you know, been very effective at it and, you know, really moving me around to, to multiple places. So, you know, versatility is a great skill set to have and being able to move around and, you know, line up against different offensive linemen and, you know, try to attack uh, offenses weaknesses is, is going to be a lot of fun. And, you know, we have a lot of pieces here 
to to play dominant football. And, you know, I think it starts up front with us and we have a lot of versatile guys on on our D-line. And so we'll be moving around a lot. It's going to be it's going to be fun. It's going to be dangerous. And I can't wait to get going. First training camp with the team, you know, has has been great. Didn't get a chance to play in the preseason, but being at Everbank Stadium and getting in front of our fans um, and the practices that were open to our fans and see, meeting some of this fan base and um, seeing the love that people around town have uh, for us here and the, the support that we have, um, I definitely felt it, you know, in my short time already being here. And I know it's gonna only going to go up uh, another notch once the once the season starts. And, you know, we're going to need you guys all year to be loud, to show up. We want to put uh, a great brand of football out there to make you guys proud and bring some consistent winning here and, and give you guys something to be proud of. And, and that's our goal is to win. And, you know, you guys are going to be a big part of it, you know, especially for me as a defensive lineman. The louder you are on third down it makes it easier for us to do our job and go out there and get the quarterback down. And this is my 10th year in the NFL. And, you know, each new year brings new excitement, you know, new joy, new new aspirations for teams and players and fan bases. And, you know, as, we, as we're starting this 2024 season, it's, it's in a lot of excitement. And everyone feels like they have the team to get it done, um, no matter where they're at. You know, there's there's been a lot of good, consistent teams um, throughout, you know, the past few years. Um, obviously, you know, I came from a good one who, you know, we were constantly in the in the conversations for winning the Super Bowl. And, you know, you have your your usual characters, you know, you got the Chiefs and a plethora of teams that have been in that conversation, the Eagles and the Bills, teams that have been you know, caught on quote unquote Super Bowl contenders in, in the in the early parts of the year and, and winning um later in the parts of the year as well, too. And looking at that, you know, the Super Bowl is in New Orleans this year. And that's always the goal. You know, you never play to be second fiddle or or come in second place or, you know, the the goal in this league is to win it all. And I definitely feel we have a team that has that ability to win it all. We have all the pieces that we need to get it done. Um, it's going to be a lot of hard work. It's going to be a long journey. It's going to be ups and downs. It's going to be adversity that uh, that strikes. But I definitely feel we have the team that is on the cusp of doing that and getting to that, that big game and winning it. I don't think people have been talking about what we've been building here um, enough. We like being slept on. We like being uh, the underdog. And that's okay. That's fine. You know, what matters is is what you're doing later in the season. And what matters is the product and the brand of football that you, uh, that you play with. And um, I think people are definitely sleeping on us, but that's fine. You know, we're, we're going to have to, to wake some people up this season. And the, the thing about the NFL is that it's a take what you want league. And so if you want respect, you have to go out there and take it. And you do that in a multitude of ways. You look different on tape. Um, that's how you get respect. When people turn on the tape and watch you play, people say, man, there's something different about this group. Another way you do it is by consistently winning. And it's hard to win the NFL week in and week out. But the teams who are able to find a way to win doesn't always have to be pretty. doesn't always have to be a blowout. It could be gutty wins, close wins. But the goal is to win and win consistently and win and dominate. Um, and that's how you get respect. So we're going to go out there, put our head down, go to work week in and week out. And if we do that, are able to do that consistently throughout the season, we'll look up and be in a good position right where we want to be in the end. Looking at our week one matchup, I'm really excited. Uh, we got the Dolphins. We're going down to Miami. We're on the road for week one. Dolphins have a, a great team. It's going to be a great challenge for us in week one. A AFC opponent, an in-state opponent, you know, so we got to go down in uh, the Battle of Florida. <laughs> got a couple teams here. You know, they have a good team, good quarterback, a lot of skill positions, players all over the field. Um, and so it's definitely going to be 
uh, a huge challenge, you know, for us, but I think we're up for it and uh, we're excited. And, you know, they got some great players. Tyreek Hill was voted um, by all of us, his peers, the best player in the NFL. We got a lot of uh, a huge challenge on our hands. But the thing about week one is, and it always is going to be like this, is in week one, not everybody is going to be hitting on all cylinders. And a lot, a lot of games in week one are lost more than they're won. You know, it's going to be sloppy football. It's going to be penalties. It's going to be miscues. And so week one is all about not losing the game, not making uh, mistakes. Who can make the fewer mistakes? Who can be the less penalized team? Who can have the less mental errors, bust on plays? Um, and that's really what week one boils down to. You know, everybody's going to be uh, fired up and ready to go, you know, around the league. It's week one, you know, opening Sunday. If you're not ready to go, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you should be ready to go. Um, but it's going to boil down to who can make fewer mistakes and who can execute at a higher level. It's always going to be like that. Always will. Can't wait to take the field finally with my homies, with my teammates, with my dogs and go out there and dominate. And I can't wait. You know, preparing for week one is is a little bit interesting because you kind of have this, this bonus time um, to prepare. You know, you know who you're playing, have known for quite some time. So there's a little extra time to prepare for, for your week one opponent. And, you know, in terms of practice, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, preparing all the way up and through the game is what's important. And, you know, for me personally, our fans of the show know I love to watch film, know I love to uh, study my opponent. And uh, so a lot of that is going to be uh, getting done. Excited to play against the Dolphins as well, too. One head coach, Mike McDaniel, former coach of mine, guy I've been around a lot. Um, a lot of, you know, former teammates as well, too, are on the Dolphins. So excited to to have an opportunity to to go against them, play against Raheem, um, who was a guest on the show not too long ago. That's my, that's my dog, too. So definitely going to be excited to play against him. But, you know, in terms of preparation, you know, it's preparing all week, preparing your body, preparing your mind. Um, up all the way into Sunday. And then when Sunday comes, you know, playing free. And if you need to make adjustments throughout the game, you know, you get with your coaches and do that. So um, I'm always excited about the preparation piece of getting ready for a game and what that entails. And, you know, um, I love going into a game and feeling like, you know, I did everything I could. I went above and beyond to prepare myself uh, and get ready. And, then I let the let the the work show. For me, game day is I like I like my game days very very planned out. Um, you know, depending on if it's a night game or a day game, it might look a little different. But I like my game days very planned out. Waking up early, getting my body moving around, doing some yoga, doing some stretching, getting a good breakfast, getting to the stadium early. Um, I hate being rushed. Like, it seems like sometimes I can get to the stadium four hours before the game and I'm and I still feel a little rushed. Um, like I'm running out there trying to tape my wrist and tape my fingers. And uh, that's the worst feeling, like feeling like you're rushed and you got to put on all your stuff so fast. Some dudes get to the stadium like an hour and a half before the game. I have no clue how they do that. Like, I see them walking in the locker room. I'm like, bro, like... <laughs> How are you about to get ready? Like, I've been here for like four hours getting ready. And, but, but that works for some guys. But me, I got to get there early, get it planned out, and get it prepared. In terms of what I'm going to wear to the game, I don't have it planned out yet. Um, I have a few options, a few ideas. But same thing with that, too. You know, getting that planned out early and ahead so you're not rushing or feeling like, um, it's last minute. It's very important. Um, but going out of Miami, Miami vibes, you know, I'm going to have some nice, throw on some nice um, for week one, for sure. Step into the stadium, feeling good. Can't wait to get down there to Miami and, and take the field. And um, this week is going to be a big week for us to continue to prepare for that game. But uh, we'll be ready to go once we get down there. There's been a lot of news, a lot of headlines, 
lot of different things going around the league um, that I'm sure I've seen, you've seen. Um, one of the biggest news was uh, Brandon Ayuk. He's been, my homie's been uh, a big topic of conversation this entire offseason. Seems like it's always a receiver, you know, topic of conversation in the offseason, contract negotiations. But Ayuk finally got uh, the payday that he definitely deserves. Um, I was talking to him throughout the off season, trying to give him a little guidance, how to handle the situation. Um, it's a situation I've been in uh, before, and I'm glad he finally got it done. He is an amazing player, one of the best receivers in this league. Um, and it's good to see someone who comes in, works extremely hard, balls out, does what he needs to do, set himself up and his family up uh, for the rest of their life. And congrats to BA. I know he's gonna go crazy this year again. Another thing going on in the league, each year, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but each year the NFL gets together, they review, they review every play from the NFL season. And they they do that for a multitude of reasons. They take in, they gather a lot of information on the the, the status of our game, the enjoyment level for you fans, player safety. There's a lot of things that the league takes into account. So they watch every play. And they're always trying to figure out how to make our game uh, more enjoyable, more fun for the fans, but also player safety is important. How do we keep our game safe? And two big things are going to be huge changes in the 2024 season. One being the kickoff rule. And uh, this, this is a big one. You know, I for as long as I can remember, I don't know if there's – been a kickoff change in the past, but for as long as Eric Armstead has been alive, kickoff has looked like kickoff. You started kick the ball at the 50 or 40 or whatever, and guys run down and got a little guy with the ball trying to run, and you got guys <laughs> slamming to each other trying to tackle. And it's definitely an exciting play for fans. And that's what the NFL had realized, that kickoff is an extremely exciting play, and it needs to be a part of our game. But also, it's an extremely dangerous play. You got guys running 40 yards full speed into each other and colliding. And, um, so injuries were at an all-time high on the kickoff play. And so what they did was they moved the kick up a little bit, but that led to not as many returns and that led to a lot of a lot of touchbacks which was good for player safety but it eliminated the exciting play from the game and so um they were trying to figure out how to get that that exciting play back in the game and th what they came up with um is this new kickoff look where guys are five to ten yards away from each other and they're not allowed to move until um, the receiver or the returner gets the ball and my first time seeing it was in one of our preseason games, and I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I thought that the excitement of kickoff definitely needs to be back in football, which I'm sure a lot of you fans are excited about. And it's an exciting play for me as a player as well, too. You know, I'm on the sideline, and um, Parker Washington, um, one of the first kickoffs of preseason, he went for like 70 yards, extremely exciting play. It gets everybody excited in the stadium. So it definitely needed to be back. Um, I'm excited it's back. I was on kickoff. <laughs> uh, a lot of people don't know. I was on kickoff return my rookie year. And, um, yeah, I had a <laughs> bit of an experience with that. It was definitely a tough play to be on. You know, I would say I didn't know if I really – I didn't know if I was really built for special teams at the time. Um, but you got to do it. Somebody's got to do it. And, um you know, I think it would be interesting to 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 see myself on this new kickoff. Um, I, I want to see like how I would do, you know. But that's not my role on the team anymore. <laughs> not my role on the team anymore. And I think we got some much better suited guys. But I think I think I'll be be better equipped for this this new kickoff uh, look for sure. Might be a little better at that than this long running forty yards. Um, so excited about what that's going to do for our game, bringing that play back, um, in a safe way. 
and excited about that for, for this 2024 season. Another big change was um, Guardian Caps. For those you who don't know, Guardian Caps are the soft shell cover pads that we put on top of our helmets. And last year, we changed the rule. Um, and obviously, for Guardian Caps and player safety, there's been a lot of data research gone into um, preventing concussions. And that's a big part uh, of our game as well, too. And these Guardian Caps have been seen to uh, definitely help with that. And so we started off with them in practice and uh, last year and now, or f- a few years ago, and now you're allowed to wear them into, uh, allowed to wear them in a game if you want. And, you know, I would say when we first started wearing Guardian Caps, the perception might have been that might look weird in the game, that might take away from, you know, the football aesthetic, but now you're allowed to wear them. Um, I think, you know, from what I've seen, it's been a little mixed in the reviews of it. I'm all for players being safe. And I think that you have to give them the tools to be safe. And if there's data that backs them helping and protecting um, against that, then, you know, that's amazing. And, you know, I've also seen fans saying like, wow, you know, that's cool. Like if it's, if it's keeping our players safe and they're able to stay on the field and, and play great football, man, wear whatever you need. Um, And so that's cool to see. It's cool to see that, you know, you're allowed to, um, that the the data is there, that the research is being done to put uh, yourself out there in in a safe manner. I've seen a couple guys wearing them in games. I think Jonathan Taylor was one. Me personally, I don't know if I'm there yet to wear it in a game. Just for me, it's a little heavy. Um, and like moving my head, just a little heavy and knock on wood, I've been able to, you know, avoid, I've never had a concussion, uh, in my career, hopefully stays that way. And I'm, I'm able to be safe out there on the field. Um, and I'm going to continue to continue rocking what I've been rocking, but, um, it's good to see that. Good to see the changes. Good to see that, um, you know, there's a new narrative that, you know, it's important to, to protect and take care of ourselves. And, you know, players as an NFL PA, we're able to um, have these discussions and we can come with the NFL and, you know, make our game safer and more fun uh, for fans. So another very scary story um, that happened um, over the week weekend, uh, Ricky, Ricky Pearsall was shot in San Francisco. Don't know all the details, but... That is, uh, I'm sure that news rocked the the NFL world and um, something that you hate to see to happen to anybody. But, you know, it just, it brings up another conversation amongst NFL players about, you know, our safety when we're, we're out and about and, you know, different worries and fears that we have to have to keep our family um, and us protected and safe and you know, what you can and cannot do. It's just sad that, you know, in our world that you have to do that at times. I'm definitely happy and so uh, thankful uh, to God that, you know, he's going to be okay and and nothing um, more serious injury happened. But it just goes to show you, you know, what we have to, you know, deal with at times and, and how we have to be able to protect ourselves and hopefully, you know, learn from, Uh, a situation and um, I'm glad that he's okay and safe and has his life. And that is a life threatening situation. And, you know, it's it's something for us as players to learn from um, and how we can better protect ourselves and, and be more cautious. Um, Like I said, I don't know all the details of what went on. I'm just happy that he's okay. And, um, you know, let's try to avoid, you know, another player or, Anybody, for that matter, being in a situation like that. Another thing I got to do uh, over the weekend, um, Sco Ducks, you know, proud uh, Oregon um, alum. And uh, they reached out to me to narrate their 2024 season opener hype video. And um, that was a lot of fun. You know, it was it was easy. They sent me the video. It's on my Instagram. If you guys want to go check it out, um, they sent me the video. 
All I had to do was a voiceover for it. They sent me a script. It was a dope experience. This was my first time narrating uh, a piece of content. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Got great reviews from it. Oregon, by far, hands down, has been, always will be. It's been like that since I've been there, far before I've been there. But their video staff is out of this world. They make the best hype videos, video content. We used to watch um, a video that they made before every game uh, when I was at Oregon, and it was always the best. Gets you right in that mode to go out there and take the field, exactly what you needed. And um, so they always been the best. And when they sent me the video, I was like, dang, this is dope. Uh, this is a dope video. And, and the fact that I get to, to get it, got to narrate it and add that extra element to it was really cool. Um, my Ducks pulled it out in week one, but didn't have that great of a performance. And so we dropped from third to eighth. But I still do feel like this is our year to to win a national championship. I love what Dan Lanning is doing with the program. I love love the team. I'm going to be watching and supporting all year. And, you know, we're going to get in that playoff, and I think we're going to make a run and, and, and get that natty. College football in general has been crazy with no NFL football this past weekend. You know, everybody was tuned in to the college games, and I definitely was, and it was a lot of fun. NCAA football, the video game being back, I think, adds an extra element. I don't know why. To college football, like I feel like it just maybe like re-excited like some fans that may not have been as invested, but it got them reinvested with the game. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but that's kind of what I feel like. I feel like, you know, people are tapped into college football. And I know from an NFL player standpoint, we've always been tapped in. What a lot of college players don't know is that. We always are watching you guys' games. Like even when we're traveling, we're on the road, about to play um, a team in the hotel, the mill room. We always got college football uh, games on. Like, and so we be tapped in. Like, we be definitely watching. A lot of y'all be doing your thing. And so definitely going to be tapped in this year uh, a lot more in college football. I feel like there's, there's an excitement around college football. And, you know, it, uh, it's different than the NFL. I feel like. High school football, Friday Night Lights, Saturday, college football, and NFL football are all special in their own way. And um, football is back, man. Football is back. 2024 season. You know, it could change your life in a, in a season, man. And um, I'm excited to, to get back out there and uh, take the field again and, and have a lot of fun with my homies doing it. Appreciate you tapping in to episode one of season two of Third and Long. Thank you for tapping in with me. Make sure to subscribe and check us out on wherever you get your podcasts. Next week, we're going to do a post-game recap of our first game with the Dolphins. Always got our Seth Scout segment, so be tuned in for that. We're going to be breaking down some film uh, of me and our team. And also, too, we're going to be uh, tapping in on some things going around the NFL and staying up to date on that. Make sure to subscribe and check us out wherever you get your podcasts. This is Third and Long, and I'll see you on another episode.